Canto Two of The Rape of the Lock by Alexander Pope. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Not with more glories in the ethereal plain the sun first rises o'er the purpled main, then issuing forth the rival of his beams launched on the bosom of the silver Thames. Fair nymphs and well dressed youths around her shone but every eye was fixed on her alone on her white breast a sparkling cross she wore which jews might kiss and infidels adore her lively looks a sprightly mind disclose quick as her eyes and unfixed as those favours to none to all she smiles extends oft she rejects but never once offends bright as the sun her eyes the gazers strike and like the sun they shine on all alike yet graceful ease and sweetness void of pride might hide her faults if bells had faults to hide if to her share some female errors fall look on her face and you'll forget them all this nymph to the destruction of mankind nourished two locks which graceful hung behind in equal curls and well conspired to deck with shining ringlets the smooth ivory neck love in these labyrinths his slaves detains and mighty hearts are held in slender chains with hairy springes we the birds betray slight lines of hair surprise the finny prey fair tresses man's imperial race ensnare and beauty draws us with a single hair the adventurous baron the bright locks admired he saw he wished and to the prize aspired resolved to win he mediates the way by force to ravish or by fraud betray for when success a lover's toil attends few ask if fraud or force attained his ends for this ere phoebus rose he had implored propitious heaven and every power adored but chiefly love to love an altar built of twelve vast french romances neatly gilt there lay three garters, half a pair of gloves, and all the trophies of his former loves. With tender billet dew he lights the pyre, and breathes three amorous sighs to raise the fire. Then prostrate falls, and begs with ardent eyes, soon to obtain, and long possess the prize. The powers gave ear, and granted half his prayer the rest the winds dispersed in empty air but now secure the painted vessel glides the sunbeams trembling on the floating tides while melting music steals upon the sky and softened sounds along the waters die smooth flow the waves the zephyrs gently play belinda smiled and all the world was gay all but the sylph with careful thought oppressed the appending woe sat heavy on his breast he summoned straight his denizens of air the lucid squadrons round the sails repair soft o'er the clouds the aerial whispers breathe that seemed but zephyrs to the train beneath some to the sun their insect wings unfold waft on the breeze or sink in clouds of gold transparent forms too fine for mortal sight their fluid bodies half dissolved in light loose to the wind their airy garments flew thin glittering textures of the filmy dew dipped in the richest tincture of the skies where light disports in ever mingling dyes while every beam new transient colors flings colors that change whene'er they wave their wings amid the circle on the gilded mast superior by the head was ariel placed his purple pinions opening to the sun he raised his azure wand and thus begun 
ye sylphs and sylphids to your chief give ear fays fairies genii elves and demons here ye know the spheres and various tasks assigned by laws eternal to the aerial kind some in the fields of purest ether play and bask and whiten in the blaze of day some guide the course of wandering orbs on high or roll the planets through the boundless sky some less refined beneath the moon's pale light pursue the stars that shoot athwart the night or suck the mists in grosser air below or dip their pinions in the painted bow or brew fierce tempests on the wintry main or o'er the glebe distil the kindly rain others on earth or human race preside watch all their ways and all their actions guide of these the chief the care of nations own and guard with arms divine the british throne our humbler province is to tend the fair not a less pleasing though less glorious care to save the powder from too rude a gale nor let the imprisoned essences exhale to draw fresh colors from the vernal flowers to steal from rainbows ere they drop in showers a brighter wash to curl their waving hairs assist their blushes and inspire their airs nay oft in dreams invention we bestow to change a flounce or add a furbelow this day black omens threat the brightest fair that e'er deserved a watchful spirit's care some dire disaster or by force or slight but what or where the fates have wrapped in night whether the nymph shall break diana's law or some frail china jar receive a flaw or stain her honour or her new brocade forget her prayers or miss a masquerade or lose her heart or necklace at a ball or whether heaven has doomed that shock must fall haste then ye spirits to your charge repair the fluttering fan by zephyretta's care the drops to thee brilliant we consign and momentilla let the watch be thine do thou crispissa tend her favourite lock ariel himself shall be the guard of shock to fifty chosen sylphs of special note we trust the important charge the petticoat oft we have known that sevenfold fence to fail though stiff with hoops and armed with ribs of whale form a strong line about the silver bound and guard the wide circumference around whatever spirit careless of his charge his post neglects or leaves the fair at large shall feel sharp vengeance soon or take his sins be stopped in vials or transfixed with pins or plunged in lakes of bitter washes lie or wedged whole ages in a bodkin's eye gums and pomatums shall his flight retrain while clogged he beats his silken wings in vain or alum's styptics with contracting power shrink his thin essence like a rivelled flower or as ixion fixed the wretch shall feel the giddy motion of the whirling mill in fumes of burning chocolate shall glow and tremble at the sea that froths below he spoke the spirits from the sails descend some orb in orb around the nymph extend some thread the mazy ringlets of her hair some hang upon the pendants of her ear with beating hearts the dire event they wait anxious and trembling for the birth of fate end of canto two recording by rhonda fetterman